Hi, this is Fred Rose. Um, today we'll be talking about um, business impact models at work, um, and specifically models that work at the base of the pyramid and help create social or environmental benefits. So this um, lecture is based on a study that's done by the Monitor Group, which is a business consulting group, much like McKinsey, um, based in Mumbai, they did an extensive survey of the base of the pyramid businesses in India and, and some in Africa um, and identified seven basic business models uh, that are in use in this space. Um, so they looked at quite a few um, hundred, three or four hundred businesses um, that included both for profits and non profits. So it was a pretty good mix. Um, this report is is a little dated now, it's five years old, but it's still pretty good. Um, it's called Emerging Markets, Emerging Models, if you're interested in, in getting it online. Um, so let's take a look at these. So the first one of the seven is called Pay Per Use. Um, so this is if you can afford to purchase the whole um, product or service, um, this allows you to use um, your cash to buy uh, a specific portion as you go. Um, so it's attractive in that it lowers the cost that, um, for service, um, and it may, this larger system may be managed by um, a group management structure like a community-based organization or self-help group or um, a local entrepreneur may manage it. So here's an example. To, <clears throat> this is a pretty common scene that you would see um, in a small shop in, in India or Africa. And um, you, you see these single-use um, servings, basically these sachets of um, things. Here it's mostly um, soap and shampoo and detergent. Um, and, and this is an example of pay-per-use. So you're really paying for a single serving as opposed to buying a big jug of shampoo or um, laundry detergent. Um, seems pretty simple. Um, I think that um, this seems pretty intuitive, um, but this is an example of pay-per-use. Um, here's another example from India called the Baraju Foundation. Um, and this is about providing clean water to a um, village. So there's a centralized water cleaning facility um, that may, the capital for that may be provided by a foundation or a larger NGO or some kind of organization. Um, but the operation and the maintenance of it is really paid for by the user. So um, many villages have or communities have a central tap, so people are used to going to a central tap to get water. In this case, they'll be going to this facility and, and paying for the water that they use. Um, sometimes there are examples where people may pay uh, a monthly rate, not unlike a micro utility, for example. Um, so this is an example, and this may be managed by the, um, the self-help group in the village or um, something like that. Um, Pay-per-use toilets are also an example of this, um, where there may be a, a central facility that's um, donated or provided through some other program, but the operation really runs by people paying for the usage of it. So pay-per-use, you, you can find lots of examples if you look the next example is called uh, no frills. Um, and this basically means taking out a lot of the um, extra features of a product and really relying on them. Um, we're just going to sell the basic product, but we're going to sell a lot of it. Um, or we're going to specialize in a particular aspect of the product or service. Um, so it really relies on high customer volume and high asset utilization. Um, 
typically is a specialized service, not a, a full service business. Um, here's a great example, cell phones. Um, you know, the developing world is full of these uh, simple um, cell phones that you can use for talking and sending text messages, and that's probably about it. Um, you know, they don't have apps on them, they don't have internet access, they don't have some of these other fancy things. But in terms of making calls and sending texts, they're just fine. And that's an, impor an important thing to remember is that um, we're not talking about providing a, a poorer service. Talking on the phone with this or with a smartphone is the same. So um, the basic core service that you're providing is still the same. Here's an example from some um, a business in India, Way Spring Hospitals. It's a series of hospitals that are focused on maternity care, um, and and that's all they do. So if you have a broken bone, you don't go to this hospital. But this is for maternal care, um, and they're able to specialize in that, um, provide a good rate for that, and in, and furthermore, this. Um, company um, leases old hospitals, um, so they don't have to create create new ones. Um, but the quality of the care is very good. Um, but it's just focused on um, maternal needs. Um, so this is an example of no pros. Um, specialized service, high volume. So the next topic, um, para-skilling. So para-skilling, para, -skilling, so para you know, refers to you know not quite being a professional, so we have paralegals, for example, and that stuff. So it's really taking that notion of no frills service, but but really re-engineering some complex services into a set of simple tasks that don't need um, a high uh, degree of um, professionalism to execute. Um, it's typically used in things like medicine or education um, types of services. So let's look at this example. Aravind Eye Hospital um, is located in southern India. Um, actually, there's a number of them now. It's a, it's a very high volume hospital that, rely, that serves just eye-related issues. Um, so I've been to this hospital. I've gone through it. I had an eye exam there. Um, I paid about 50 rupees, which is about a buck, and that, um, getting that eye exam, for me paying for it, covered the cost of two to three free pictures. Um, and what happened is, if you go to the eye doctor in the U.S., you go into the clinic and you sit, um, and one doctor comes in and does all these different tests on you, and they look at the eye chart and all that sort of thing. Here, what would happen is you go to one place, you'd look at the eye chart, You'd leave, you'd go to another waiting room, you'd wait, you'd go in, have your next test done, et cetera. And so you had one person doing each one of these tests. It ended up taking longer, um, of course, but it was also only 50 rupees, and the quality of the eye exam was, was just fine. So these people do, uh, Arvind does a high volume of about a million patients a year, about 150,000 eye surgeries. And because they do so many, they're able to attract world-class eye surgeons because it's a great place to see a lot of patients. So again, the quality of the care, it's very good. Um, however, you know, much of what you see there is not provided by eye doctors, but by people who are specialized in that particular issue. Um, Dian Shala is an example in India of same sort of approach for teaching. Um, in India, as in Africa, you have to pay for public school. It's not a lot, you know, um, probably about 10 bucks for the, the school year. Um, but this is a, this organization creates a standardized curriculum. Pe um, people, are, employees are trained in teaching a particular aspect of it. So you don't necessarily need to have a fully skilled teacher. Um, but you have a standardized curriculum. And, and again, you can see the test scores here are very high, so it's not a lower quality education. Um, 
So the next topic is more about how do you get the product to somebody or how do they find out about it? Distribution of products and services in, in developing countries is, is really hard. And so how, how can we address that? Um, so a lot of it is finding an existing person. So um, I've been to lots of places in India and Africa, and everywhere I've gone, I am able to buy a Coca-Cola or a Lay's potato chips. So they've obviously figured out how to do this, how to, how to get this distribution. How can we use that to distribute something more interesting? So here's an example. These Yamoya um, kits, which are anti-diarrheal um, medicine, are distributed um, through these um, cases of Coke. So it's an example of essentially piggybacking onto an existing channel or in the case of a termination channel. Here's an example from India. Um, these e chopal discs were kiosks, I'm sorry, were put up around India about a decade ago. Um, they're internet, internet kiosks to allow farmers to get um, commodity information, prices, etc. Um, lots of people are piggybacking on those to provide services. So here's an example of a company providing weather insurance by um, connecting to people through these kiosks. So find somebody that has a distribution channel that works and see if you can buy it from them. So these next couple ones are focused around agricultural production. Contract production is essentially saying I'm a buyer and I'm going to contract with you, the farmer, and say, I agree to buy a certain amount of your product at a certain price at the end of the um, growing season. The advantage of that to the farmer is that he's guaranteed a sale and, and that can help him perhaps borrow money and other things that he may need to do. And the advantage to the buyer is that they're locking in a certain amount Um, some of the bad things that can happen with that are that um, the price may go up and, and the farmer wants to break the contract. Um, so some of the things that are done with that is to maybe contract with farmers to grow things that are not typically sold in their area. Um, here's an example from Africa, a honey company that um, works with farmers to supply them a set of hives and, and the farmers then um, are able to harvest honey on a regular basis um, and they sell the um, honey to Honey Care. Um, it's not a, um, a full-time business, I mean they're able to use um, some spare lamb for it. So this is a good example of the next example of deep procurement. Deep procurement is much like contract production, except it's sort of done on a larger scale. It's typically a third party that is connecting um, farmers or producers with some kind of buyers. Um, here's an example in India of um, artisans. So uh, there's this large organization that connects with all these women who are artisans, helping them to sell their product. Um, Demand-led training is the last one. It's basically um, a company has um, a need for employees. They go into a, a location and, and basically train people to do the job. Here's an example in India of um, setting up call centers in um, villages or rural areas and training people to do it. Um, so it's typically, um, these are formal sector jobs, um, and um, there are um, several examples of that in, in India. Um, this might not be applicable for the kinds of businesses that you're doing, but it's a good example. So there you have it. Thanks.